Mummy's about to do something mean. I'm sorry. Good girl. Right, you have to do this fast before you get sick of me. Do you reckon we can do the hat? <laughs> everyone and welcome back to my channel and Merry Christmas from me and Callie. There you go. If we haven't met yet, my name is Madison Don't and here on this channel I teach you the science, yes literally the science to becoming holistically healthy and happy. Now I really 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 wanted to try and get this video out to you guys before Christmas because the topic that I'm going to be speaking on today which is how to stay on track and stay healthy over the festive season is something that I talk about a lot with my one-on-one -on -one clients in my eight-week online coaching program called the Holistic Glow Up. So if you haven't heard about that then go ahead and follow the links in the description below if you're interested in working with me one-on-one. -on -one. But usually what comes up is that there's a friend's birthday coming up on the weekend or there's Thanksgiving for my American clients or now we've got Christmas and New Year's coming up and so many people are worried about ruining their work that they've done over the year, maybe ruining their progress um, and even just falling off track. They're so terrified that it's inevitable they're going to eat bad food and then feel really bad for it afterwards. So in this video, I just want to give you a couple of tips and I promise you that after watching this video, you will walk away feeling so much better about your health goals for the next couple of weeks over the festive season. So for the first tip, I'm just going to jump in straight away and say that self-compassion is key. Your life does not revolve around being or looking a certain way. It's really about enjoying life. So if you do take time for yourself this festive season, in to enjoy some time off with your friends and family and indulge a little bit then that is completely okay because life is not linear not every day is the same and we do have ups and downs we do have different things come up like you do you want to come up no I don't think that's a good idea because then you're gonna to want to go down and then up and then down so I totally acknowledge that not all foods are going to be on track for you. But the key here is that you want your relationship with food and with exercise to be a long-term thing, not a short-term thing. And when people diet and they restrict themselves and they ban themselves for, from certain foods, that causes resentment. And the second that you have resentment come into your health journey, into your food, your relationship with food and your relationship with exercise, it's game over and it's not long-term sustainable. So I can actually tell you that if you want to be the healthiest that you've ever been in 2021, you need to have more self-compassion over this festive season and not punish yourself if you are, you know, having too much to eat or just self-compassion. That's all what it's really about. And it is 100% mindset, this journey, this health journey, and whether you achieve your health goals or not. So. Um, even though I have so many modules in my program that are focused on physical health, a huge part of my program is on the mindset and mental health side of things. And every single one of my clients that I've had go through so far, they've looked back and said, look, I thought that I needed the physical health stuff the most, but it's been incredible. You've really surprised me how much I didn't know I needed the mindset and the mental health work. So I promise you, if you practice self-compassion, then this festive season will go along. You'll have such a nice time with family and friends, and then you won't feel resentful. And you'll be able to jump right back into your health goals after all of these celebrations. So in summary, there's never really a start again because like I said, life isn't linear. It's not a game where you start and stop. It's just about moving forward and making the best choices that you can for yourself and for your body that day. And that also goes for your mental health as well, not just for your physical health. So on that note, I, that leads me into tip number two, and that is that if you are craving something, it's probably better just to have it. Now I know that that is weird coming from a nutrition and health coach, but from my experience and my experience with my clients and my friends and my family, if you are craving something and you don't let yourself have it, then it builds up and builds up and builds up and you crave it more and more and more and then you end up going crazy in the process 
and the whole situation finishes with a binge. And so when you start craving something, so say you might be craving a piece of cake, if you just have that piece of cake when you're craving it, or maybe you know you hold off, you work out whether it's like you're hungry or you're craving it because of boredom or maybe emotional eating, but if you've been craving it for like you know a couple of hours or a couple of days, you go, no, you know what, I'm just gonna treat myself and have that piece of cake. And so you have that piece of cake and then it's gone from your mind. Whereas if you hold on to it, hold on to it, hold on to it, and you just crave it more and more, but you ban yourself from having it, then what you're going to end up doing is having probably the whole cake instead of one slice of cake. So it can actually be better for your health goals if you just, you know, listen to your cravings sometimes and just allow yourself to you know, explore what you're craving and then move on and forget about it. One little treat is not going to ruin your health goals. If anything, like I've just talked about, it will probably help them to last longer and be more long-term because you're not going to be resenting them. So while we're on the topic of food, my third tip is not really to focus on restricting anything, but instead find substitutes. So even though I'm dairy free, I still have chocolate, I still have ice cream, I still have cakes, I still have all of that stuff and cookies, but I just find dairy free alternatives. And I know that that can be harder in some countries than others. In Australia, we are quite fortunate to have dairy free um, packaged products that are available to buy, but you might just need to get creative if you're in other countries or even just sort them out or maybe buy online. But if you bake from scratch, then you have a, a lot more control over what goes into those products. So maybe explore with some help, healthy baking um, and try and make sure that it is dairy free, refined sugar free as well. Um, and gluten free is another good one as well. So I have found awesome alternatives for my dairy free. Um, and so for example, for chocolate, Loving Earth is refined sugar free and dairy free. And make sure that you're having the conversation with family and friends as well, because I think it might surprise you how happy they are to accommodate your dietary needs, provide alternative foods, or even just have it in the back of their mind when they are going grocery shopping for the big day. Alternatively, you could bring your own foods. So for example, if you couldn't have the dips that were going to be on the table and the cheeses, then you could make your own avocado dip or maybe even buy a dairy free avocado dip and bring that along to have with the chips or whatever. So just think ahead. Um, it is actually quite easy as long as you are aware and prepared to find alternatives and still enjoy that time snacking with friends and family. So I am very fortunate that my family is aware of my dietary requirements and some of them have dietary requirements themselves as well. So we just accommodate for each other and we are just very aware of that when we're buying Secret Santa gifts or anything like that. So just have that conversation. I had a client who was really nervous to have that conversation with their family, um, but you know, they did and she was really surprised how supportive they were of it and then she didn't have to be embarrassed anymore about those dietary requirements because you'd find that most people these days are either dairy free or gluten free. Um, so yeah, just have that conversation and it is the time for giving and for being really close to family and friends. So I'm sure that they're going to be more than happy to accommodate for you. So now on the topic of exercise for tip number four, and that is you would be surprised how many things actually count as exercise. So around this time, I don't want you to think about whether you're keeping up with your gym commitments or anything like that, if you don't make it to the gym for the next two weeks, it really does not matter because there are so many other ways, especially when you are around friends and family, to you know get physically active. So things like going on a hike with your family or going on a beach walk on Christmas morning. Um, I know that these are very Australian specific examples, but maybe even building a snowman, having a snowball fight if you are in one of the countries where it is winter this time of year, um, and just running around and collecting snowballs. And that's the playing, that is still exercise. So if you have a family with lots of little kids, 
go and play with them and that way you are having that bonding time you are really enjoying that quality time with family and also getting your exercise in at the same time so whether it is even going swimming at the beach or there's just lots of activities that can double up as exercise but also really allow that bonding time so I highly encourage you to focus on those focus on fun focus on play and focus less on whether you are getting to the gym today tomorrow or this week so with that I'm going to keep it really short and sweet this video and just leave it there just really show yourself a lot of self-compassion over this festive period it doesn't go all year long so you can take two weeks off and it's not going to wreck your progress it's not going to send you backwards you're not going to have to restart because you should just be focusing on enjoying life and taking each day as it comes and doing anything possible to avoid resenting your health goals and your health journey because it is a long-term relationship that we want to build rather than just short-term dieting and punishing ourselves with exercise that is not the way to be successful in the health game so i'm gonna leave it there hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did then please make sure to like it below and comment on what your favorite tip was and what you're planning to do for exercise over the christmas break whether you're going to play or maybe you like to get outdoors with family and friends and also if you haven't already then make sure to go over and follow my instagram as i will be sharing what i get up to over this christmas break but that is all from me for today thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video next week. Mm -hmm.